Hey, what's up guys? It's John here. I just did a failed live stream. It turns out this platform is very powerful. It doesn't play nice with OBS. Um, so what I'm going to do here is we're going to briefly cover um, a first look at Digital Gaming, Digital Gaming Institute's Cody's Lab. So Cody's Lab is this interactive platform that teaches you to code. Uh, down in the future, we're going to offer shader development. We're going to offer multiple different genres of games. Um, our first release is going to be this month. It's going to be a space shooter, and we're going to look into expand, expanding from there. Um, this platform is designed uh, by my partner, Rick. Uh, Rick Love and uh, he's done an awesome job on this and we're really excited to show you guys what we've been working on and um, Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and play this and I'll go ahead and walk through what this tutorial is about and how it works So when you download a tutorial, you're gonna receive a screen like this you're, It's gonna be in unity and you're gonna hit the play button and always make sure you're maximized on play You're gonna receive my intro video. So if you're wearing headphones, I'm telling you right now go ahead and turn them down I've been told my intro video is a little loud nothing I can do about it um, but yeah, so here we go. So go ahead and turn them down and then you can turn them back up. So that's the intro of what's going to happen when you run the app. At the end of that app, you're going to be brought to this screen. This is Cody's Lab homepage. If you're not familiar with who Cody is, Cody is the DGI monkey. So we have three panels here. We have a test area, which allows you to play your game as you actually are writing it. You can also go to final game, which actually allows you to play the final game. And then you can go to not started yet. Or you can go to the active step of where you are in the actual game. So it's pretty cool. You can go to continue tutorial, which will take you back to where you last left off. You can go to change lesson. So if you don't want to, so if you want to skip ahead, you can actually skip between lessons. We have a rating system. Uh, you get anywhere between one to three stars based on how well you completed everything. Uh, we can preview your game. We have a course browser, so you can select all the fee all the courses that are part of this um, part of this course. So they're basically broken up into different lessons and features uh, for this project. So it's pretty neat. Here we have a notifications and feedback. Um, icon and what this is is a live feedback platform that's integrated into the app it allows you to write a little awesome note comment you know a question or concern or request and you can submit it to us directly on our website through the app uh, it's completely integrated and at the end of each lesson you'll be able to give feedback on the current lesson so we can know um, how to make it better in the future so that's that. And let's go ahead and actually go to the training room now. If we go to the training room, the tutorial starts off, if you haven't done it yet, it's going to start off at the first lesson. So here it says lesson one, set up main scene. Step one is to create main scene, objective, create a new scene. Now what you're doing here is we are creating a non-spoon-fed environment. Everything is interactive learning. You learn by doing. It's as simple as that. So what you need to do here is you're going to get this little toolbox here that's going to explain to you what you need to do. And oftentimes it's going to say, just try to figure out what to do. Just try anything. If you make a mistake, it's going to fix it. Or it's going to tell you what to do. So check this out. We need to create a new scene. If you're not familiar with Unity, this might become, uh, you know, you might not know how to do it. Well, this is a perfect example. Say I click the inspector. You're going to get that little error noise. It says you must create a new scene that is not correct. Now it's going to tell you. Go to file. And then it says, good, what now? Well, a new scene. And there you go, it says great, you completed the step. Now it's going to take you to a before and after shot. Here we're adding the background. So here we have a before picture of nothing, then after you're going to have a background in your scene. So it's going to say objective, add the background, it's going to tell you that the background's in the prefabs and you have to drag it there. So I go to prefabs, background, and I drag it into my scene view. And there you go, background's added, you did a good job. Now the same thing goes for the player. Your before and after has a player in it. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. Add the player. And we're going to do it one more time for the enemy. So now we'll add an enemy in there. And there you go. Way to go. That's what you needed to do. So we just set up our scene. We went from before having completely nothing to after having a scene set up. And now you have a lesson feedback here. Uh, how difficult was it? Was it helpful? We'll say this is a great lesson. Awesome. All right, and send feedback, and that gets sent to us, and then you can just close that out. You can also close that. It's totally optional to do. So now we're going to go ahead and skip ahead, and we're going to go ahead and create player movement scripts. So it says here, create the player script. So if I go ahead and hit play, it says objective. Create the player script. Note the name is player. You must try to figure out what to do. Try anything. If I get it wrong, like if I click on enemy, 
it's going to say you must select a player. Great, next part. I need to add a script, right? So we're going to say add component, new script, and it's named player controller is the script. And I go to create now, and it says great, you completed the step. So now it's going to go ahead and take me to the actual coding part here, which is construct the code. And this objective here is going to translate, uh, the objective is translate the player to the right. And what it's going to do is it's, it's going to discuss all the logic that's required for moving our player to the right. And then it's going to give you information about what you could possibly do to figure this out on your own. It's going to give you hints like what to Google search, or it's going to give you hints to look at documentation. So here it says hint, search online for Unity Transform Translate. And then it gives you the transform.translate documentation. Now, what I can do here is if I already know it, uh, I can enter in the code. It says translate the player to the right. You're going to get this tool tip here as you type. So I need to transform. And then if I type something wrong, like for instance, lowercase t, it's going to say this is case sensitive. So make sure to capitalize the correct letters. So I remove tr and I put translate. And then I can fill it for me. And then I say here, vector3.right. And that's it. So great. Now after each uh, code lesson, what's going to happen here is you're going to be able to correct the mistakes. The computer is automatically going to ruin that line of code and you have to fix the errors. So what we're doing here is we're looking for a mistake and we're going to select it. So you'll see here that it says translate the player to the right. Transform.translate right.transform is incorrect. So I hit right. It's going to remove that word and now I need to put in the correct word which is vector3. Now the next part is transform. That should be dot right. So it tests you all of these little quizzes and it's forcing you to understand the implementation rather than guessing. So you have to, it's, you know, it's helping you remember the code. And then you have here understanding the code. And this is where it quizzes you again on fill in the blanks. So you have here, blank is a method that allows us to actually move. The translate method. Then you'll get another one. Uh, usually they have a maximum of three. So blank is the component that holds the position rotation scale. And then you'll get one that has all three. So here we have a translate method. Uh, in order to move our object, we can call the translate method of the transform component and make it go to the right. That way you fully understand the line of code that you created. And what we can do now is uh, right now it's going to say create the player movement scripts, translate the player to the right with real time. So now it's talking about real time because if you play the demo, it's going to just fly off the screen. So you need to slow it down using time.delta time. It's not going to tell you this, but it's going to give you information about what you can look up, and it's going to give you the scripting reference to look at an implementation of delta time. So here, you would retype it and say transform.translate. And if you type anything wrong, the computer will automatically uh, tell you exactly what you need to do. It's not going to fix it for you, but it will tell you what you need to remove and what you can replace. So we're going to say here, vector3.write. And then we're going to multiply it by time dot delta time. And the intelligence will fill it in for you and enter. And there you go. And then you'll do the same thing, correct mistakes, understanding the code. And you can skip ahead to the next lesson. And you can actually skip ahead as well. If you, if it's getting, if you feel it's too easy for you, just skip the next lesson. Go to the next one. You're not penalized for it. You just don't get a star for it. So here you'll see get the horizontal input, get the vertical inputs, translate the player to the right using horizontal and vertical. Um, next we have check if the player is past the right edge of the screen. This is where you actually have to write full methods. So now it's going to discuss the logic and you have to actually create a full if statement with code that's going to describe what you need to do. So check if the player is past the right edge of the screen. So if transform.position.x is greater than the edge of the screen which is 10, then there we go. That's what I was asking for. And then the next part would be actually making it switch to the left side. This is the wrap feature. And you would go ahead and fill in like transform position equals a new vector 3. So the whole, the whole idea behind this is that it's a super interactive way to learn. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We have a lot of awesome content being released this month. The website's getting launched this month. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hope you guys are looking forward to this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you're following on DigitalGamingInstitute.com, our Facebook page, Twitter page. You don't want to miss this.